is recording started. Okay. Hey, how's it going? Doing amazing. Awesome. Okay. So I, um, I'm putting a little paper together of, uh, redefining veganism. Um, I sent that to you and, uh, we're going to talk about that. Um, be, before, before, um, you, uh, mention your first thoughts on it. I made a huge mistake going into this actually, because, um, I had issues with the original, um, vegan society definition of veganism mm. and that's a, a big part of why i was doing this and i wanted uh, i want to at least share my thoughts with the push towards it being more of a philosophy and less to do with um specific actions and then after i wrote this and sent it to you i i was doing a live stream with somebody and i we were going to talk about the definition and i looked up the definition and i realized that the thought the part i thought i made up that I sent to you was in the original, which is the word seeks. I think the word mm. seeks is so important there because seeks means there is no actual action happening. Right. Um, and I, that's the most important part to me. Obviously I want people to do the action. And if somebody claims that they are of the vegan philosophy, but they eat uh, animal products, um, there's going to be a lot of explaining to do. Um, but uh, anyways, the, the, the reason I was putting this together is the word seek. So there's a good chance I'm going to change a lot based on that. And I might just um, have the paper focus on how I think we should respect the word seeks in the original. But anyways, yeah, go on. Well, see seeks, uh, did you use something similar, didn't you? I, I used that, that thinking word. I created that. I thought I, I thought I made that up. Oh, and, and okay. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought the original said does not exploit and so on. Um, and gotcha. and so it's it, it's declaring that if you do anything to exploit animals, then um, then you are not a vegan. And uh, but instead it says if you seek to. And uh, anyways, yeah. Interesting. I, we could talk about that element if you want before we talk about what I wrote. Um, if you have thoughts on that, what do you think the difference is? Um, I think the difference is that um, at least on paper, they wanted the world to um, view it the way I'm writing it. The way I'm saying that if you extend, um, um, uh, uh, What's my words? Um, hold on one second. Moral consideration. <clears throat> moral consideration is the, what I was looking for. <laughs> if you if you extend moral consideration to non-human animals, um, then then that's what matters. And then everything else is just a, a philosophical conversation. If somebody says like, oh, um, I, I think I need to eat meat to be healthy. I haven't been convinced I don't. But I extend moral consideration to animals. So I won't eat unhealthy meat products like hot dogs and and uh, chicken nuggets or whatever. And um, I and somebody else might say like, okay, so I know that um, animals, uh, we shouldn't take their dairy, but I'm addicted to this. So I know it's wrong. I'm going to work towards not doing it, but I'm eating cheese. A lot of people want to be vegan, but they have that hump of cheese uh, they got to get over. And that's a funny image. Um, <laughs> and um, so in my mind, the just holding that philosophy – and it, you're either born with it or not. You you uh, you can see an animal and you can go, if that thing was suffering right now, I would care, unlike a person that is unable to care. And uh, that's kind of just how I view, view the philosophy, um, whereas most people view it as um, the actions you take. As soon, as soon as if you fall – if you're vegan for two months and you fall off the wagon, then – you were vegan, and then you were not, and then now you could be vegan, vegan again. And uh, I almost think the the falling off the wagon hmm, doesn't matter. I do, I do think a lot of people think of it that way. It's like, yeah, um, so in your mind, the thing that would have to change for them to not be vegan would be their like the underlying mindset or philosophy of yeah. extending that moral consideration. So yeah. under the the... Um, I don't know what it's called. Is it the vegan society or something vegan under their definition, yeah. under their definition, they use the word seeks, right? Seeks to exclude mm -hmm. something, something as much as practically possible or something, right? Uh, seeks to exclude. What is it? Um, yeah. You know, so I'm going to, I'm going to send it to you right now. Um, this is the full definition. 
Veganism is a philosophy and a way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practical all forms of exploitation and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. And by extension, uh, promotes the uh, development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of animals, humans, and the environment. Uh, interesting environments in there too. Okay, um, so the, the, the part in the middle where it gets to any other purpose – I believe that first half is what was created initially in the 1960s. And then the addition that adds the environment and human stuff, which a lot of people don't like, and I too mm -hmm. do not like, that was added, I believe, in 1988 by the Vegan Society, but it was just an addition. Interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> like, if we found out that, that, being vegan had a 1% impact negatively on the environment. Would we all of a sudden abandon, abandon it as a philosophy? Like I, I wouldn't, yeah. um, but yeah. yeah, anyway. Okay. So which seeks to exclude those things, exploitation, yeah. cruelty to exploitation and cruelty is what, is what it looks like, right? That those are the active words uh, there. Yeah. Okay. And so yours, you say, Veganism is a philosophy that seeks to extend moral consideration to non-human animals on the basis of actions unwanted by each animal, such as harm and physical force. So yours differs from this mm -hmm. in the way that yours is uh, unwanted actions is your criteria for whether an action mm -hmm. um, would fall into the category the category of like should not do this to animals and they define the the things which is exploitation and cruelty yeah well before we get we delve too far into that do you well actually let me um let me explain um one thing about why i think the philosophy should be how it is and then i have a question for you um or a comment at least um i i kind of view it like um any other philosophy whether it's a religious philosophy or not um like some if you take like a religion like christianity if somebody believes that um, they believe in Christianity, they are a Christian. That is their philosophy they follow. And they believe that it's wrong to have sex before marriage. And then when they go and have sex before marriage, they feel like they did a wrong thing, but they didn't become a not Christian <coughs> while, they're, while they're having the sex. And then they, they started over. They're born again the next day. They just... Um, they have a philosophy they follow, but they, mm -hmm. somebody might call them a bad Christian in that moment, or if they continue that act, they're, they're at times a bad Christian or something, but they are still a Christian. So it'd be like if a vegan ate steak, um, they, they'd have a lot of explaining to do, but they're just, uh, they hold the philosophy. So anyways, that's, um, I wanted to throw out that example. Cause I think that's something worth thinking about. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Just super quick, like, um, I think it's fairly semantic. It just comes down to how you're defining veganism. And I'm fine using either one for the purpose of discussion. Like veganism, I, you, it can be a philosophy. And then the, the sort of the your mindset towards those moral principles and the alignment thereof is like the thing that matters. But we also say things like, is it vegan too? And it's like, mm. we're, we are referring to it as an action. So I think it's just like, depending on the context of how you're using the word, I think that it, and the same with Christian, is it Christian to have sex before marriage or like whatever you said? Yeah. Um, it's like, no, it's not, but it doesn't, but you can still have the Christian like underlying mindset and beliefs mm -hmm. and do a bad thing or whatever. Y not that yeah. I think that's bad. <laughs> well, and anything yeah. being Christian to, or vegan to do something, um, the majority might have an opinion that's similar, but then others might not. So somebody, somebody could say, is it, is it vegan to um, eat meat when you know you don't need to? And then everybody will agree on that. But somebody could say, is it vegan to um, eat uh, roadkill? And then some people like David um, will say, uh, no, it's not because you're using them. That is an mm -hmm. animal and you're using them. And, um, and so that's why I think uh, it, it would just be um, – different philosophical conversations on, on the topic. Um, sure. but I think that is a good point about the, the action. Um, but let's go over, I'm curious, um, your thoughts on the word exploitation because exploitation essentially breaks down to the word use. But mm -hmm. do you think, um, do you think there's a, a, a difference there? Like, do you think, um, it's necessary to use a word like exploitation versus using the word use in this definition? Do I see a difference between those two words? Um, so you're asking? I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. I just, um, exploitation I, maybe, maybe entails like, um, 
more of a self uh, use kind of does too. I was going to say selfish, like a selfish mm -hmm. um, sort of uh, like reason for, for doing the, the thing, but maybe use does too. Um, yeah. Well, like you can use a car, but you, you're, if you, somebody usually wouldn't say ex exploit a car, like you're, um, so it's, it's almost always negative. And so I just, mm -hmm. I, I thought it'd be interesting to discuss that. Um, just if you had any other thoughts on it on if, uh, anyways, yeah, I, I don't know. I just wanted to, to get over that element. If that, uh, changed much at all. Yeah. I mean, specific, like, I don't know the, the it doesn't really matter to me. I think like when somebody says the word use in the context of animals, I think they are basically meaning exploit. Like yeah. they are meaning a selfish use. Like, yeah, that, that's sort of like my, that's how I interpret the, the language. Um, yeah. If you're asking about like what I think about whether exploitation should be a part of the definition of veganism, um, it's an interesting one. I, th I think it should be. And, and I know it's not as a part of yours. Like the... I just happen to not use it, uh, that word. Okay. But I, I guess I, what I'm wondering is if it said the word use, would you wish it didn't? And it said expo exploitation or um, would you I feel like uh, it gets more clear? Exploitation is less, less, uh, the word has less um, variety of uses. Yeah. Um, whereas like use, it, it does mean a lot of things. And I think it can mean the same, like a similar thing to exploit, to exploit, but, um, mm -hmm. exploitation is a more clear word. So I, I do prefer it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and then it also, uh, makes you wonder maybe an element, like if you lived out in nature, you like, and you're very familiar with nature, you have a cabin out in the, in the wild and let's say that there's cows roaming around the way deers roam around. And, um, and so there's manure, um, everywhere, but just randomly throughout the forest and you had a garden and you knew they weren't using that manure. If you took that and, it, and used it, um, you're using the manure, something that left their body and yeah. that they're not <laughs> clearly surrounding. If they saw a person and goes, don't touch my manure, that's a different story. Um, <laughs> um, does the word use, um, fall into place there? I'm, I'm trying to bring it to extremes mm -hmm. of how maybe, uh, David, uh, David might've. Yeah. Been yes. I wonder how he would, how he would answer that question. I don't, I don't see an issue with that at all. Personally, yeah. like, like, ex <laughs> yeah. Um, cause you're not exploiting them. You're exploiting something that, um, came from them. Same thing right. if a cow, if a cow walked up to a, a bowl that was sitting on the floor and the cow just randomly was able to milk itself and shoot milk into a bowl. <laughs> and then the cow left. It's like, you could drink that. You could drink that milk. You just can't, um, make the cow be in a spot and then tug on the cow to get the milk. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, we're we're kind of trying to put into words how our intuition like because on the on the flip side of this I think it so let's assume that we are able to like genetically modify cows in the future such that they have they love being milked and like they love everything that happens in the to them in the dairy industry and they have like better lives than humans have and like it's a totally only positive like only positive experiences. I still think that is not a good thing. I think that like my, my values aren't just on the suffering. It's on the, the rights violations. And I think mm -hmm. that like freedom and sla slavery or whatever, which it sort of is it, like entailed by exploitation. Like yeah. I think those are subsets of that word. Um, I would not be cool with that, with, with that. Whereas okay. it's like in a, in a similar way, like they well, why wouldn't you, they don't care that they're being milked. They actually love it. Yeah. And they, um, but I see, I see that as different from the, the living out in the wild, taking the poo of the wild cows that don't care about the poo because you're not, um, you're not infringing on their rights at all. Yeah. Okay. Well, what about this? Okay. So, so you might've heard me talk about this, but, uh, uh, you build a cabin in the woods, there's a doorway, there's no door, a wild, uh, wolf dog thing comes up. It likes you. It plays with you. It goes in your house. Um, and then it can leave at any time. There's no door. So we got the ultimate um, vegan future uh, version of a pet. 
Um, mm-hmm. But it can leave at any time. It can it, it go back and forth. Um, I, I haven't figured out if I extend that idea to something that involves um, um, almost more forceful physical contact. So let's say you find a horse in the wild and the horse is – see, you don't break the horse down. You don't train the horse. The horse is wild, but it happens to be a relaxed horse. And you're petting it and it likes you and you're aware of this idea that you could be on it and ride it. Um, If you like gently, like let's say um, you're kind of up in a tree and the tree is at a perfect height that the horse comes up to you and its face is right there. And it's kind of, it's it's in a way where you can just gently hop on the horse and there's no saddle. The horse can obviously go, I don't like this and kick you off. But they seem to not care. It'll. It feels just like how to train your dragon, riding that dragon, where it's like it's liking it. Kind of nudges you around. on almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I'm unsure how I feel about the idea of hopping yeah, on something either. that doesn't want it. Um, but then again, wait, um, that doesn't want it. If you knew it didn't want. Or it, sorry, 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 sorry. That 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 you that don't, you don't know, know if it, know if it. If yeah, it yeah. wants it. Sorry, yeah, I worded that weird. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm not sure either. Yeah, and so. Um, but but here's here's one that's almost seeming more disturbing, but it's it's almost more clear that you're giving it the ability to let you know it doesn't want it. What if this cow that gave birth and its calf dies, but the cow still has some milk in it, and you're petting the cow just like you're petting a horse, and um, and then you just get your head down to its udders. And you just start like drinking from it, like it, it's your mom or something. Uh, it's a weird image, but just looking at the the uh, the rights element of it, is is there much difference between petting this wild dog, petting this horse, petting this cow, um, where your hand touches it, the fact that your mouth is on it, as long as you're letting it, it's not tied down. There's no threat at all. You're not like training it to like this food you're offering it and then only giving it to them if, if they let you drink their milk. Um, there's no threat at all. And they can walk away anytime you're doing something uncomfortable. Um, yeah. Can, yeah. So anyways, what, yeah, what would you well, in that specific example, as far as I know that um, cow, like dairy cows, the way they live right now produce a ton of like more milk than a cow uh, than their calf can even drink. So you like, mm-hmm. if you were trying to just take care of a cow, you would need to milk it or there can be health problems that arise. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't see it as too much different, I guess. It's like if you milk it into a bowl and drink the milk, or if you're actually like, mm-hmm. you know, doing it the way that, that a calf would. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as they're not tied down, but let's remove uh, yeah. that element. So cows are, are currently bred to be able to produce more milk. So mm-hmm. that's not really a natural thing that you would come across if we had a, a more perfect world and this was a wild cow. And then but you still said there's excess milk, like the, the calf dies. So the cow ha- has yeah. excess milk and they're like, if you're. Well, yeah. and just like any other mammals, um, the milk's there for the baby. And, it, and even if it can be painful, um, the milk dries up. And it's gone like 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 when moms like wean their babies off of milk. Um, there are weird techniques where you can put cabbage on the breast and it makes it um, <laughs> it, it takes the pain away. It does it, yeah, it's weird. Okay. You should look up. Um, well, anyways, um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, mammals in general, the milk will dry up once the calf's done. But um, I feel like any action that takes place without force, I don't I don't know. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if you're if you're sucking on the udder or if you um, squeeze it and and catch it in your hand and go like that or whatever. Um, I I just don't know if I feel too concerned with something where um, there's no fo- there's no force of it to stay there. It can walk away at any time. Um, yeah, it almost yeah. comes down to the ethics of. Uh, how humans should treat each other. Should we always ask consent for every bit of physical touch with another human? Or is it reasonable to have um, a societal norm where you go on a date with somebody and you get the nerve to like put your hand on their leg or to hold their hand without talking to them? Now, if they don't want that, they can pull it away and say, hey, don't do that. And then if you try to hold their hand after they said that, then it's harassment and you go to jail and get a restraining order. Um, but is it immoral to take um, take cues from people 
and touch their hand without them giving permission. And how much different is that to, um, to go to a cow and maybe get some of its milk out when there's no force? Yeah, I will. I mean, yeah, in the sense, the, I think the difference is in the way that consent is granted, like through a, with another human, at least an, an adult human with a functioning brain, um, we can be certain that we have consent for an action, even by sort of an implied societal norm and like failure to correct you, like by uh, pushing your hand off the leg or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, if they don't push the hand off the leg, that's sort of the implied consent. And it's like, we have the societal norm that says like, yeah, it's probably okay to, instead of asking a way to ask is by just doing it and like being okay with it being pushed away or like paying attention to body language, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that like we, we can get cons that is still an action where we are getting consent. Uh, whereas with an animal or a child or something, it's like, you, you can't be certain of, of consent. So um, that doesn't mean there's not things. I, so that's the difference. And then the question of whether you can do things without consent. Yeah, obviously you can do some things. Like I, I think your example with the wolf walking into your house and you play with it or whatever, like, I don't, I don't see an issue with that at all. Like personally. Mm -hmm. um, and if like, if milking a cow and drinking the milk is a like, sorry in the example where the calf dies and there's like a, a cow that has excess milk or whatever i am i think that's probably fine like i'm picturing just like an animal um sanctuary or something where you took a pregnant cow into the sanctuary and the and they the calf died at birth or something and the cow produces milk i don't know i don't really see an issue with with people even drinking that milk um mm -hmm. it's not contributing to the demand for like for animal ag and like bad things to happen to animals. Mm -hmm. So it's like yeah. the reason I don't like the word exploit or sorry, not that I don't like it. The reason I, I want exploit as part of the definition is to not set up the situation where we have the, like the cows that want to, it, there, there, it's weird. There's a philosophy book I read uh, like a few years ago called the pig that wants to be eaten. And it was just a, yeah. a um, a collection of like moral quandaries and things like this. And the, I think the first one that of which the book is named after is the pig that wants to be eaten. And it was like, it was something pretty similar to that. It's like, if you could somehow get a future generation of pigs or even find a pig or something that like wanted that and wanted like, I don't want, I, that does not align with my morals. Like I don't want to create <laughs> yeah. that situation. And I, so it's like exploiting is kind of the only word I can think of that eliminates that situation mm -hmm. um so yeah I, I, yeah I don't know if that answers your question but that's yeah yeah I'm well i, I I'm, I'm just starting to wonder if um if i like my like i was starting to think that the definition doesn't need to change i just want to write about how we're using it wrong by ignoring the word seeks but now now i'm mm -hmm. starting to um i think mine needs to change i think the notes you sent me uh, make some uh, good points on changing a couple elements, but the um, I think the unwanted part is um, is is very important because uh, one thing I, I heard a handful of people talk about when it comes to having like a rescue pet is it, it really comes down to what's in your mind. If you're if in your mind, the main thing you care about is um, taking care of this thing that couldn't be taken care of any other way. Right. Um, then that is vegan. But if you get more out of it than you are helping, then it's not. But I don't know if that's true. So with your dog, if you get this crazy joy out of it, and similar in the story I had where you have an open doorway and a, a, a wolf comes in and it loves playing with you, but you love playing with it. Mm -hmm. the, um, the, no, I, I don't yeah. agree. I, I'm with you on that. I think like it, it's... All the so unwanted. The only reason to pay to be the there. only reason to pay attention. No, 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 no. Uh, oh, wait. Your but position the, is like it doesn't matter if you get lots of joy out of it, right? No, because well, what I'm saying is, um, there's nothing wrong with getting joy out of it and wanting it, and th as long as the animal you're getting joy out of doesn't not want it. So I think it's important yeah. to point out that if yeah, yeah, you yeah. if you get an overwhelming amount of joy out of playing with this wild wolf, 
that doesn't change anything. What matters is if they don't want it and you're hugging your wolf and they're trying to back up and you don't let go, um, mm -hmm. it matters if it's unwanted. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I think like the only, the only valid consideration with people that hold the view that like you shouldn't get more out of it than the animal or something is like, maybe you just need to be cautious in those situations where you're getting a lot of joy out of something such that you're paying attention to, um, what's going on in the other, on the other side of things. It can be mm -hmm. like, yeah, but well, I, I think this is what most people do. And I'm guessing you probably don't people get joy out of their pets and they want to make sure their pet is also well loved and gets joy out of their life while they're seeing it when they're interacting with it. But when people are at work and they have to like leave their pet behind, maybe they don't have a partner, maybe um, they don't have a big backyard. Um, it's out of sight, out of mind. It's like, I, I'm not imagining how my pet is suffering in this crappy area. And every mm -hmm. individual is different and people have different amounts of land and that kind of thing. So totally. Yeah. Um, I, uh, one thing I wanted to also try to break down about this, um, definition is it was written a while ago. So it was in the sixties and people use words differently over time. Um, one of my favorite movies from 1941, the wolf man, um, when somebody finds out about a man turning into a, a, a werewolf, they, he calls it fantastic because by definition, fantastic's referring to uh, fantastical things, crazy wild things where now I don't know if it's different in Canada, but at least me growing up in like the nineties in the U S the word fantastic almost solely was used as a teacher telling you you did a good job in school. So the word mm. fantastic kind of has shifted over the years. So I don't know if the word practicable has shifted over the years, but there is a slight difference, but possible and practicable are almost seem completely synonymous. And so do you think we should, it should matter and we should look into what those words meant back then versus now and why they would use both of those words? Uh, no, I don't care about the history of like anything. I would just rather oh, just same. reinterpret. Yeah. Like I would, I would rather the vegan society just like look at the way we would use words now and mm -hmm. what we want for like what definition we want and use the words that exist now yeah. to just like create the definition that aligns with your underlying moral philosophy. So if the, but, if the vegan society proposed two options right now, if they said they were going to remove possible or they were going to remove practicable, um, <laughs> e either one, n not which one would you prefer them to remove? But if they were to remove either, mm -hmm. would, would either anything? of those options make you go, no, I wish it was both. Oh. Do you view those words different from each other? As far as practicable. Not really, not materially different. I don't know. Okay. Maybe having them together, like I do. F actually, I, okay. I don't. I think in the way that um, actions are derived out of the moral system, I don't think there's going to be many changes. I think, but it it does add a little bit of clarity. It's like, yeah, do do everything you can as much as possible. Um, but also like if it's, if it's really like, um, practicable, just sort of like entails more in terms of like the actions as they pertain to your daily life, in my mind, at least it's like hmm. possible, almost like there's different modalities in which that can apply. And like, there's like uh, metaphysically possible, logically possible, like empirically possible or whatever. I might be screwing up the, the uses there, but like there's possible kind of like uh transcends different modalities whereas practicable sort of like brings it down to uh, your daily life this is what we're talking about mm. in my mind at least well do, do, does the word um um so like as an example like from... it, it may we may like we may be living in a world where it's lot like it's uh we only have two choices or something. One mm. choice where we kill all, or I don't know, we kill all cows and the mm. other one where we exploit them for another few years as we transition to veganism. It's like, which is like, well, those are the only two possible ways to get to veganism is like continue exploiting the ones that like, if the whole world aligns on veganism, it's like, what do we do? Like we could kill them all to stop the suffering or like we, 
continue factory farming or I don't know. So there's, if there's only two options possible, it's like, well, we're picking the option that's possible. We're picking the better of the options that's possible. That's kind of like how I view that word. And then practicable, practicable is like, um, if, you know, if you're out in Thailand or something and it's like, you're, you can't find vegan food for like three days and you're about to, you know, starve or something. It's like, maybe that's a, a reason for an exception to the rule. I don't know. Something oh. like that. That's well, kind of how it, because that sounds to me more like practical and I, and from my understanding, mm. so practicable basically just means possible or practical would be uh, like, what's a reasonable thing to do in a situation um, where practicable is, can you do this? Is this thing possible? And so th that's what, th that's kind of what I meant when I've looked up the differences, even reading the differences of the definitions, it just seems like uh, two words were created for the same meaning. Okay. Um, fair enough. So, but yeah, but yeah, you, you might be right. It, it's uh, a lot of words have slight differences and uh, it, it really comes down to what we mean by them anyways, um, because we use language to understand each other. Um, so practical, practicable could mean um, horse for all we care, as long as we know we're talking about a horse. Right. <laughs>